COVID has had a devastating impact on us here in the UK, with more than 140,000 people having lost their lives through the course of the pandemic. And we know that every day more than 100 individuals across the UK are, die from this disease. So the pandemic is not over and all of our efforts to prevent, to treat and to manage infection are key and vaccines are a key part of this. And the UK has done an exemplary job in getting the vaccines out in terms of ensuring that we are able to get the first doses and the second doses out. And we're increasing the number of people who've had a third dose or booster because we now understand that to be fully vaccinated does require three doses. Uh, the two primary ones that we've had and now the booster shot. So we'll reflect a little bit on that. Two years into the pandemic, we now have a better sense of what we all need to do to prevent and to manage COVID. And this chart just shows all the lessons that we've learned over the last 22 months as we've been navigating and managing the pandemic. So from hand washing to wearing face masks to cleaning the environment and ventilation straight through to testing, screening, social distancing, uh, using PPE. We have so many things now in the toolkit that really help us to prevent the infection. But the most powerful of these is in fact the vaccine. And the vaccine is important because as with other infectious diseases, when you have a vaccine, it is really a very strong way of boosting your immune system to both prevent severe disease and death from the infection. So the vaccines are really effective, not only in reducing your risk of becoming infected, but even more so preventing you becoming severely ill and requiring intensive care admission and from dying from the disease. So these are six reasons why we are so keen for everyone to benefit from the vaccines. We know there are millions of people across the UK and billions globally who've received the vaccine. So for those of us who were waiting to see the safety profile and to have more people have it before we did, we now have billions of people globally who've had the vaccine. We know it's working to keep people out of hospital. We know it's working to prevent death. We know it is working in helping us to recognize and fight the infection. It has been infected with the Delta variant. We will learn how effective it is for the new Omicron variant. We know it's highly effective for preventing women who are pregnant from getting severe disease and in protecting their babies. And now the guidelines are absolutely clear. If you are pregnant, get the vaccine because if you become infected with COVID and don't have the vaccine, you will have a worse outcome. So we now know after billions of people have received this, that actually when you're pregnant, getting the vaccine is a good thing. And this is having a huge impact on changing the course of the pandemic. And this was going to be a key part of ending the pandemic. The more people either acquire infection and develop natural immunity and supplement that with a vaccine dose or those who haven't had the infection but are able to complete the three doses, which we now recognize as being important to maximizing your immune response. So I had a little vac uh, va uh, vaccine. I had a little video here on how the vaccines work. It is just a minute long, but it really is a good way of reflecting on and understanding how the vaccines work. So I'll play this now. Coronavirus. Like many viruses, it uses a protein on its surface to attach to and enter our cells. Antibodies that fit onto this protein can block the virus from attaching. Coronavirus mRNA vaccines teach our immune system to make these antibodies. How do mRNA vaccines do that? mRNA is a genetic material that instructs our cells to produce proteins. The mRNA in the vaccine is wrapped in a layer of fat particles that protect it and help it get taken up by specialized cells of the immune system called dendritic cells. Once inside these cells, the mRNA does not enter the cell's nucleus or interact with DNA, but remains in the cytoplasm with other mRNA molecules, waiting to create the enzymes our body needs. When ribosomes read the vaccine mRNA, pieces of the viral surface protein are made. These pieces are then displayed on the surface of the dendritic cell. The dendritic cell travels to a nearby lymph node where it presents the surface proteins to other cells of the immune system. Some of these cells, called helper T cells, 
Train B cells how to make antibodies that will fit perfectly onto the surface protein of the virus. Other cells stimulated by the protein pieces, called cytotoxic T cells, can kill virus infected cells. Now, when the coronavirus tries to infect us, our immune system is ready, immediately recognizing, neutralizing, and destroying it before we ever even have a chance to become sick. Um, I wanted to reflect a little bit on the safety of the, the vaccine and the boosters, the side effects, as well as the importance of the booster program. So as you know, all vaccines which are used in the UK have to meet strict safety standards, quality standards and effectiveness standards. And these are set up by the MHRA. And we're really pleased that over the past year, we've seen the MR MHRA working with the Department of Health and the NHS and the JCVI in developing policies for vaccination and providing guidance on how those vaccines need to be used and delivered. Over the course of the year, we've understood more about the side effects of the vaccine. As we know, side vaccines can cause side effects. Thankfully, now that millions of people have received them and received them safely, we now have a better understanding of these. So most of the side effects are mild and short term and not everybody gets them. And the common side effects are usually the same across gender, across race, by age, and usually they only last a day or two. So some of the common side effects are on this slide, which are the pain and tenderness in the site that you have the injection. Some people have felt a little bit tired. You can get headaches, aches and chills, but those generally go after the first 24 hours and can be easily managed by taking over the counter uh, pain medications, paracetamol, etc. So the side effects generally have been mild and the vaccine has been well tolerated. Now, over the course of the year, we've learned about more serious side effects. So, for example, uh, rare cases of inflammation of the heart, which is called a myocarditis or pericarditis, have been reported after Pfizer and Moderna. And you'll recall earlier in the year with the AstraZeneca vaccine, there were some concerns about uh, 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 cardiovascular disease, blood clotting uh, uh, conditions, which were caused by the vaccines. Now, the good thing is, because of the work of the MHRA, the NHS and the JCVI and the Department of Health, when we have signals of serious side effects, we are able to modify the delivery of the vaccination program and take steps to reduce those side effects. And so we've changed the way, for example, the AstraZeneca vaccine is delivered and who gets the AstraZeneca vaccine. And we've also used our learning to ensure that we really integrate these messages in counseling to people who are getting the vaccines. Over the last year, we have clear evidence that there is absolutely no evidence for the vaccines having any impact at all on the fertility of men or women. I know that there have been a number of studies which have been exploring the impact of the vaccines on women's menstrual cycles, and this is an area that continues to be investigated. But as far as fertility is concerned, there is no evidence to suggest that the vaccine has a negative impact. So that's a vaccine and we've been really working on the first two doses of the vaccine over the past uh, year and now we're as we are entering the winter period we now have a better sense that actually to complete the vaccination course and to have maximum immunological uh, uh, power to deal with the virus we need to have at least three doses of the vaccine and so the booster program is going to be an essential part of building community resilience against the coronavirus as we enter the Christmas period. So we know that so far the booster program is ruling out well. Millions of people have already had their booster jab. And as of last uh, this week, we know that there's now a new national push to extend the booster program to all adults over 18, 18 years and over. And the program will be ruled out over the next two months. So by the end of January, everyone who's eligible for a booster dose will receive that booster dose. Now, this means that the NHS is going to be expanding its activities significantly uh, in the weeks and months ahead to ensure that everybody gets access to their vaccines. Now, why are the booster doses important? Well, they're important for three key reasons. One, to ensure that you have the highest protection against the virus and against variants of the virus. 
Second, because the booster doses increases your immune resilience, it means that it reduces your risk of becoming infected, but more importantly, ensuring that we're protecting those around you as well. And third, it really helps because it is uh, going to be a key part of building our resilience to new variants of concern. So while we are still investigating uh, Omicron and the impact of Omicron on vaccines, what we want to do is to ensure everyone has the vaccine protection that they need going into the winter. So important to reduce rates of infection and as we see evidence of waning immunological uh, resilience from the second dose, it's a way of ensuring that you increase your resilience as you enter the winter period. I'm going to end now by just reflecting on the other infectious diseases which we're really concerned about during the winter period, and that's flu. Um, the good news is that although we are dealing with a coronavirus pandemic, many of the steps that we're taking to reduce coronavirus transmission also work in reducing flu transmission as well. Nevertheless, we want to ensure that everybody gets their flu vaccine at this time because we now know that co-infection with flu and COVID can lead to worse outcomes. And we know that many of us have experience of getting our flu vaccines every year as part of our health and well-being. And we want to ensure we have high uptake of the flu vaccine as well as the coronavirus vaccine as well. So really important that we don't just focus on the COVID vaccine, but we use the opportunity to get the flu vaccine as well.